In this video, we're gonna be exploring the top five kitchen remodeling mistakes. You're gonna to wanna to make sure you watch this video all the way through just to make sure you don't end up with the number one design fail. My name is Jason and welcome to woodworkerexpress.com. Let's get started with ignoring workflow. Now, rule of thumb for the best workflow is gonna be the trio of your refrigerator, your sink, and of course, your oven slash stovetop. Now, from the time since there were dinosaurs, everyone has been really big on a kitchen triangle. And sure, that is a really good starting point, as long as it will work for your kitchen and your style of cooking. And one of the biggest things is you don't have to be like super speed fast. We're not looking for a workflow that's gonna make you like the bear, the TV show where he's trying to get under five seconds and going from one station to another to pump out these you know, menu items. We're not looking for that. We're just looking for something that's really simplistic and we want that kitchen to function as well as it looks. Now let's start with the kitchen sink. If we're facing that kitchen sink and we're looking at it to our right lower, we're gonna want a dishwasher, of course. And to our left lower, I highly recommend a pull-out trash can. Now these can be retrofitted into existing kitchens, which makes them a winner all around. And they can be planned for in your new kitchen remodel. Now, before you go running away too far from that sink, you wanna make sure that cutlery drawer is like right there. I couldn't imagine taking out freshly cleaned silverware and having to walk, you know, around an island to go put those away. I would like those right, pretty much on the right of the dishwashers. That way you're pulling them out of the dishwasher and putting them away all in one motion without even having to take a step. Okay, so we're just gonna call these stations. So pretty much that was the sink station. Now let's move on to the stove station. Now, wherever you lay out your stove in your future kitchen, you're gonna want drawers next to it, either on the left or the right, or I highly recommend both. And of course, as deep as you can get them. These are perfect for all your pots and pans, lids, you name it, all of the things that you're gonna be using at that stove, frying pans, whatever, you're gonna want those pretty close to the stove. Now, while we're talking about drawers, let's talk about space saving. There's two options. You can do mostly drawers in your kitchen all around. That way you lose zero space inside those base unit cabinets. Anytime you just have doors opening and there's no drawers there, you're gonna be finding yourself looking like a plumber and sticking your head all the way in the back of that cabinet to find something. And God only knows, hopefully there's no one at the other end just staring you down. Now you don't have to do all drawers everywhere as long as you're gonna be getting a really nice pull-out unit that is designed for space saving. Revishelf makes a million items like this. Bath Soggle makes a lot of them. These are really convenient, especially if you don't want drawers everywhere in your kitchen. You can put these units in all those spaces. Now let's talk about the next on the list and that is underestimating your budget. Now before you even start on a remodel for your kitchen, have a budget in mind. Then start simple, you know, like go with the cabinets that you're gonna want, see how much that costs. And then you could say, okay, weigh in some options. I really like this kind of storage. I'd really like 90% drawers throughout my whole kitchen. I really want this pull out for the corner. I want this, you know, blind corner caddy. All these things definitely add up all of those. And then, you know, add a little bit here and there and see where you're at. But you can't stop there because you gotta pay someone to put all this in. You might need electrical work done. You might need, you know, heating ducts moved. There might be a lot of unknowns, and that's why I highly recommend finding someone in the old-fashioned phone book, also known as Google, and search and have them come out and give you a quote. And if you're gonna go through that, do it at least three times, have three different contractors give you three different quotes. Take the one that's in the middle for price-wise, but budget for the one that was the most expensive quote because you just can't trust everyone all the time. Now the next on the list is overlooking lighting. Now, you're not gonna just want one single light above your island or in the center of the kitchen. I mean, that's great and everything. It will illuminate everything for the most part, but what about the light underneath the stove while you're cooking? You're gonna wanna make sure you have really nice under cabinet lighting. You're gonna want lighting above your sink, for sure. You wanna make sure you scrub all those dishes and there is nothing left on them. For the most part, just be mindful that you're gonna want enough lighting in your kitchen so that you can see really well what you're doing, what you're cooking, what you're cleaning, all of those things. Don't just say, hey, one light and that's it. I would definitely recommend exploring all of your options for lighting pretty much around the whole kitchen. I've never heard anyone say, wow, it's too bright in here. Man, I wish I wouldn't have upgraded all those lights. 
Now, the next one is neglecting storage solutions. I think we already kind of covered that one right after the sink one when we were talking about drawers and storage. But of course, always look and check out woodworkerexpress.com even for any of the newer products that are available. There's always things that are made to in design to make your life easier, especially in the kitchen. And final on the list is trend overload. Do not follow trends. Don't say, oh my gosh, gray's the new white, pink's the new red. Do as you would like with your kitchen. If you're thinking of reselling your kitchen or reselling your home, you're not just gonna sell your kitchen, that'd be kind of weird. But if you're reselling your home, putting it on the market, maybe in the next 10 years, even a little longer, just think, you know, hey, these cabinets that I'm putting all this money into are gonna hopefully last me at least 20 years. Unless you like remodeling every other year, you know, stick with what you like, what makes you feel good in that kitchen. But, you know, try to stay away from some really off the wall stuff, unless that's your style and you're not planning on pleasing anyone else but you, then go for that. But other than that, I would just, you know, forget about the trends, do what feels right, do what feels good and, you know, what you enjoy. And you can't go wrong with that. As always, thanks for watching from woodworkerexpress.com. Be sure to hit that subscribe button, tap that bell icon to be notified for our newest video. And if you have any questions at all, please leave them in the comments. We love to read them. And if we can answer them, we sure as heck will do that as well. And I will see you next video.